Hi, this is Glenda, and today's soap is a soap that I made last week as part of a secret soap challenge for Amy Warden, the organizer of the soap challenge club. And here I have my blend of oils, and I warmed them up to melt the hard ones. And from here, I'm going to measure out the amount that I need for the recipe. I'm going to link the recipe in the description box in case you're interested. This is the recipe for the bottom portion of the soap, which is going to be different than the top. The inspiration for this soap came from a puzzle that she had posted on her blog, and it had a white Bengal tiger, which reminded me of some that I had seen at a local restaurant slash attraction. I'll show you some pictures, but they're blurry because it was kind of dark and he was doing a lot of pacing back and forth, which later I learned is called a stereotypy. And I need about 54 ounces of oils because I'm making this into a slab mold. So it's going to be uh, quite a big batch. Here I have the light water solution, which to my surprise had turned to gel, and this was a first for me. However, I did do something different. Um, I think the culprit here was the EDTA combined with potassium hydroxide. Now, to make soap, you usually use sodium hydroxide, but I was experimenting because of something I read on the on a forum. And I use 95% sodium hydroxide and 5% potassium hydroxide, which is usually used for liquid soap. But um, if you add just a small percentage to a cold processed soap, it's supposed to help with the lather, like increase the bubbles and everything. So, but it doesn't seem to do well with EDTA, which is an additive used to as a chelator. So if you have, if you live in a hard water area, it will in also increase the bubbles, extend the longevity of the oils used in the soap. So in other words, it helps avoid DOS, dreaded orange spots, and also it helps reduce the amount of scum produced by the soap. For fragrance, I'm going to use Sun and Sand from Crafter's Choice which has a very neutral smell as far as like at first I thought it was more of a male fragrance but uh, on second thought and after having other people smell it they believe it's more unisex it smells very um, fresh like outdoorsy the closest thing I could compare it to is maybe when they called um, a fragrance mountain breeze or something like that for like room sprays or room deodorizers it's similar to that I'll probably put some note the notes and this fragrance may accelerate so and I also have a water discount and I have a recipe that has a lot of hard oils, about maybe 60%. So needless to say, it was a recipe for a disaster with a fragrance like this. Um, initially, I wasn't going to do any designs on the body of the soap. It was just going to be a plain, uh, uncolored soap. Uh, later, I decided to add some soap scraps and if it hadn't been for this i think it would have been mostly fine and since it was a larger amount of soap than, than i usually make it took me a little bit longer to reach light rage it took me about uh two minutes and a half and then it was ready for the fragrance to be added i'm using three and a half ounces and i wanted to make sure it had reached trace before adding the fragrance because if it does accelerate, I didn't want any light pockets. But if everything is emulsified, even if it accelerates or if it rises, it should be safe to use. And this is the moment of truth. This is when I add the fragrance. And it did something that I have never seen a fragrance do before. I have had fragrances that cause rising and 
differences that cause acceleration. But usually the horizon is a small like granules that's actually where the work comes from, like it looks like rice. But this one, instead of making big chunks like this, it was like coral milk, or like when you're making cheese from scratch, it just started looking really, really weird. And I wasn't sure what was going on. Is this accelerating or is this rising? Um, to this date, I don't know, but most reviews said that it, it does accelerate and rises. And I was going to pour it like that, but then on second thought, I decided I could try using the stick blender again, because that tends to help loosen up the soap batter when it does rise. And so I did that and it did improve the texture a little bit. It became more fluid and I was able to pour it into the mold. Um, I did have some air pockets in some areas of the soap, but not in all of the soap. I'm going to let this sit overnight and tomorrow I will finish doing the top. The following morning, I made another batch of soap to make the tiger design on top. And first I'm preparing the colorants. I'm using black pearl mica from Nurture Soap and winter white mica from Nurture Soap. The winter white mica is for the tiger and then I'm going to leave the rest of the soap batter on color so it should turn to like an off-white creamy color. These two colors seem to be the predominant ones in the picture. Uh, the three barks are going to be all black but it's not entirely black. Black per mica is a dark tone but unless you use a lot, you're not going to get as deep of a black color as if you use activated charcoal. However, I did not want to use activated charcoal or titanium dioxide for the white either because both of those, in my experience, tend to thicken up the soap butter. And I still wasn't sure at this point how I wanted to do the soap painting. I didn't know if I wanted the soap to be very fluid or thick. The fragrance like I showed earlier is Forest Hike and it's actually very good. It's kind of sweet but it has uh, the notes of pine. So overall it's very pleasant. I really liked it. I have about 20 ounces of oils for the soap painting portion and I know I'm not going to use all of it but I prefer to have extra and just pour it later in a small cavity mold than not have enough mid painting. And I will be using uh, my phone as a reference. I did not print a picture, which is what I prefer to do. So instead what I did was that I grabbed the phone on plastic wrap to prevent it from getting soap all over it. I separated 8 ounces for the white and then 4 ounces of soap butter to be colored black. And then an additional small amount which had the on-color soap butter with a little bit of the black to create just a medium gray color. To start doing the actual painting, I like layering the background color first so that I can cover most of the surface area, which is something that I learned when I was taking a correspondence art course. It was something by mail. Then I try applying the black with the spatula or something but it didn't work so I put it on a piping bag and decided to use it to outline and draw most of the features of the tiger with it. I have painted a lot of tigers but mostly on people's faces because I do face painting on the weekends. Well not right now <laughs> for sure but uh, usually uh, it is a fairly popular request from kids so I already had an idea on how to shape the mouth and I was used to doing the stripes around the face. Now something interesting about Bengal tigers is that they are white because of a recessive gene that they carry. And I'm going to include pictures of um, the information that I found at the place where we saw them in case you care to read. You might need to pause the screen and maybe zoom in. I'm not sure if you can do that though. But the other one, it's showing closer up. Overall, from the time I put the gray background until I finish, it took about 30 minutes, which is actually pretty fast for me. Usually doing 
soap paintings takes me close to two hours. However, I was in a bit of a rush, which perhaps helped me from overcomplicating this or going into too many details. I was also a little late into starting this soap to meet the deadline for the secret soap challenge. So I, I knew I needed to finish soon to give it time to harden up so that I could move on to the next step of the plan. For most of the smaller trees, I was using a, a small round tip and later to do the thicker trees in the background, I switched to a more flat looking piece. Although I usually prefer to do three dimensional uh, soap paintings, this one I was trying to keep it as two dimensional as possible, as flat as possible, because I didn't want to have issues when I did the markings of the puzzle pieces. I had uh, printed with a 3D printer a puzzle cutter and my plan was to use it as somewhat of a stamp to do the marks and I knew I will have issues with it if my soap was too thick or too uneven. So I was trying to do my best to keep it flat however when adding the snow I realized it was just too difficult to keep it as flat as I wanted it to. When I was done, I used a metal tip carving tool just to create some feathering around uh, his face to simulate the fur. And here is the finished piece. So it's been 24 hours since I made the top of the soap and it smells very good. So these are the puzzle cutters that I had 3D printed. One is smaller because I was thinking of maybe doing the individual bars after I cut them. And then the other one is bigger in case I wanted to make larger pieces. I tried with the smaller one first with the red one on a corner. And I used a small hammer, not to hammer it, but just to because it had a bigger surface texture from any other tools that I had nearby, just to help me press the mold against the soap and it was still very soft because it left a lot of uh, residue in the cutter. So I tried it on the great area that doesn't have a lot of texture and in that portion it seemed to work better. However, I'm guessing because of the pressure that I did with the hammer. And maybe because it wasn't a good 3D print. When I tried to remove it, it started breaking apart like, like you see here. Uh, I should clarify that I've only had the 3D printer for about a, maybe less than a month so we're still learning the proper settings on how to 3D print stuff so this didn't work I did print another piece and I tested it however I was still having too many issues with all the soap sticking back to it so I decided to go with the larger piece which would at least be easier to clean up in between impressions. I think if I had waited or if I would have scheduled more time in advance to do the soap and wait until this hardens more then this could have perhaps been easier. However overall I'm happy how it turned out and I'm thrilled that Amy liked it. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!